right, so welcome everybody to our meeting. Give me a second and I will organize and then we'll go ahead and start with the pledge. All right, so it is, oh, man, that makes us look later. I like this one because it says it's 432. So I'm going by 432 and not 436 on the computer screen because it makes it seem like we're more timely. So if we can stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, it looks like we do have uh, one guest. So we have Lucas. And Lucas, if you're still connecting to the, the audio, welcome. And which project are you here to talk about? Hi, this is Lucas. Uh, I think I just caught the last of it. Sound like you're talking to me. I'm here for uh, John Smith's project on Davidson Landing. Okay, so lucky for you, that's the first one on the list. So we will get to that one shortly. Uh, so we are going to let's move on to item E, uh, approval of the minutes from October seventh of twenty twenty one. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Justin, a second. Yes. All right. Now that takes us for the first to the first privilege of the floor. Is there anybody who would like to? Speak on an item different than what is on the agenda at this time. Okay. All right, Shauna, do you have anything from the development office? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. Uh, nothing from the town board at this time. Anything from the CIC? CIC people? Um, talked about budget. Uh, what was Last the one week? before that? Our budget was was it uh, the trail? Auburn. Yeah, we were Auburn talking trail. about the Auburn Trail. Uh, we had the public meeting last night mm -hmm. for the Auburn Trail. <sighs> yeah, I have it written down in the back of my car on some of those from the last <laughs> meeting, but I didn't bring it in. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there's anything um, special. I couldn't tell how many people were in the Auburn Trail meeting. Could we tell? I couldn't tell either. I couldn't see no, anything. I couldn't. I wanted. I was kind of wanted to see how many people we had joining us, but I was not one of. Yeah, them. they must have done it as a. I was like a seminar. Or something right. So I think that because that locks it down. Like, that locks it down. You can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll never know. Mm -hmm. But there was a good presentation on the Auburn Trail, and uh, look forward to hearing more about that. So I don't know of anything from the ordinance committee. Do you know? No referrals. Um, right now we are talking about uh, cemetery maintenance and a potential committee okay. for the cemetery. All but right. nothing. Uh, we're going to continue that into the next meeting. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and then the other item we're going to be discussing is the 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 clause in the zoning code about um, how we don't allow double frontage lots. Mm -hmm. um, the proposal is most likely going to be to leave that as applicable in um, industrial, most likely commercial, but take that out of residential. Um, so that's going to be our next item to discuss. Okay. And I do know that there is a public hearing on the view shed, the view shed overlay. There is a public hearing, public on, the hearing on in mm -hmm. November, November yeah. board meeting. Yeah, potentially or something. Well, we do have to do. We were talking about this today. We have to do a um, zoning map amendment. Okay. So it may we may open the public hearing and continue to continue December. it until yeah, December. Yeah, but okay. it is on at least on the horizon. Okay. Yeah. Good. So they're making an objection about the cemetery. Sure. The tree committee should be referenced with that because the trees are certainly a great part of the cemetery yes. and they are part of the things threatening the tombstones, yes. etc. Mm -hmm. And it, we have toured the uh, cemeteries that yeah, we are talked about in, that. in the care of the town. So I think including some tree committee people with that would be helpful. Okay, we'll make sure that happens. All right. All right. That takes us to item K. And we do have three referrals uh, this evening. 
So the first one, which is uh, the eight, uh, 082, and that's the one that Lucas is here for. So Lucas, we'll go ahead and present this and we'll discuss it. And then any information that you would like to add. So I'll go through and I'll share some of the key points. I did not do this review, Sarah Linda did it for us, but she is unable to attend the meeting this afternoon. Uh, so I'll go through and I will share it with you and then um, we can have a discussion on it. So do you wanna pull up while I'm doing that? Can you pull up any of the uh, images? That would be great. Okay, so 20-082 uh, is 4519 Davidson Landing. And it is for alterations to enlarge an existing pair of connected cottage uh, structures linked by a breezeway uh, by demolishing one and infilling between the two and adding an attached garage. Site development also includes modifications to the paved driveway, regrading and new retaining walls. And we can see those right there uh, in, that, uh, in that image. So a summary of the key points, the ECB rever uh, reviewed the two earlier plans for this site in 2018, involving the construction of a new garage in the Southern part of the site and a minor expansion of the southernmost of the two cottages. A major concern at the time was the handling of the runoff at the southern edge of the site where there is an existing swale and intermittent stream sizable during heavy storm events running between this home and the neighbor to the south. Uh, the current proposal involves demolition of the southern cottage and creation of a single home with attached garage encompassing the footprint and some features of the existing northern cottage. There are no variances required. Uh, it increases the building coverage from 9.4 to 14.1%, while 15% is permitted. Lot coverage remains the same at 26.1%, while 25% uh, is permitted, and no variances are required because of the pre-existing non-conformity. Uh, building height will remain below 25 feet. The increased building area is offset by a reduction in the amount of asphalt, asphalt pavement. Uh, despite the increased length of the driveway, the width is narrower. So a longer driveway, but with a narrower width. Uh, uh, regrading of a steep slope to the west of the home is proposed, including construction of a retaining wall and an engineered swale to the west and south of the driveway. Runoff from the swale and the roof drains and, uh, and the roof drains and directed to a rain garden at the east of the swale with the overflow uh, to the lake across the stone spillway. Several trees are to be removed on the east and the west for the new retaining wall uh, and remedial landscape plan is offered to replace these with new native trees and shrubs. Uh, Lakeshore guideline statement is offered describing the overall existing and proposed plantings buffering the view of the home from the lake. According to the site plan, there is a single large shade tree between the two houses and the lake, which is diseased and will be removed as part of the project and replaced by a shade tree species to be determined. Uh, otherwise, the view from the lake of the home of the lake from the home is uh, unbroken. So environmental concerns. This is a challenging site to develop due to the steep slope and the amount of runoff crossing the property from uphill development. This runoff is expected to increase as a result of the, the Hollander development to the west. Ontario County has been making improvements to the culverts upstream from this property in recent weeks. We suggest the town consult with the county public works to ensure that we have the latest information on expected runoff rates and routes. The proposed retaining wall and swale together with the downstream rain garden appears to be a positive approach for handling the drainage issue. The lakefront view of this very wide house plus garage will, essentially, will be essentially unbuffered visually. We suggest the town require more detail on the size and species of the proposed shade tree and require more extensive plantings on the lake side of the building to soften the appearance from the lake. And then finally, the recommendation. Uh, ECB recommends the uh, commends the applicant for doing a better job of addressing the site drainage challenges compared to the 2018 proposal. While we would always like to see a reduction in lot coverage in cases of a pre-existing nonconformity, the applicants have done a good job of reducing the amount of asphalt pavement to offset the increased building size and remain at the same lot coverage. We suggest consideration of permeable paving to further encourage infiltration and reduce site runoff. We also suggest that the proposed planting plan uh, between the home and the lake be enhanced with additional native trees and large shrubs 
to further soften the particularly wide expanse of house and garage from the lake. Okay, so those are, that's the plan of the recommendations. Do you want to pull that up on? So Lucas, we'll pull it up on Encore. If you have, not does anybody on the board have questions or comments or Lucas, do you have anything that you would like to add to that? No, nothing to add unless if there's any questions, I think there's a good summary of the project, thanks. Okay, anybody have any questions for it? No, I just wanna commend them. I mean, I know we had a lot of concern with the original plan and the runoff. So, I mean, thank you for the effort and and redoing that. Yes, this is a, a real improvement. So I did not see, I wasn't around, so I didn't see the, uh, the existing one, but it seems like it does a good job in uh, addressing any potential concerns that we might have. Um, we do appreciate, again, like we said in here, uh, reducing the driveway area. Um, and one thing that we are strongly encouraging is the permeable paving, if possible, to help with the infiltration and uh, prevent the runoff. Uh, so if anybody else has any... I'll just uh, speak to that real quickly. We are using something that I think is a good alternative to permeable paving. Mm -hmm. um, permeable paving can be tricky in this freeze-thaw environment. Um, and so one of the applications that we see more often successfully around here is actually a um, structurally enhanced lawn area where you have a, a stone sub-base that's beneath a layer of topsoil and grass. So it actually has the appearance of a lawn, which is, uh, in my opinion, a benefit that sets it above permeable pavement, but it can still be used as a parking area. Um, and we've implemented that in two locations on this property, just because the, the reduced pavement um, left them some areas that they need for pulling off the driveway or parking their vehicles. So that's something we've implemented um, we considered permeable pavement for those areas, but selected the uh, the enhanced lawn pa parking area instead. Okay, that's excellent because I know that's another thing that we've that we've been looking at, at you know as another option for that. So thank you very much for in, for including that in those areas when you can, uh, where you can to help so it helps soften the look and also you know, helps environmentally. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that we can provide some more information on the shade tree that's being supplemented on the lakeside. Unfortunately, the the tree right in the center um, has some issues. It's a big tree, but uh, I, I think that... Um, what is the species? We'll provide a species for that, but <clears throat> installing a new one will almost uh, help to break up the lawn or the lakeside view better because it'll be a, a lower tree with a lower canopy. Uh, okay. the, the existing, as you could see from that picture, the existing one just sort of shoots up way above the, or as you're sitting at lake level. Yeah, right. And it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't do anything anymore. It, we still like to, you know, we don't, we, same as the ECB, don't like to see those come out, but this tree has some issues They've been working extensively. You, you can see that they've updated that whole lawn, lakeside vegetation and they've done a, a great job of it and really care about how the house is softened from the lake. Um, and, and part of that, uh, they worked with an arborist on this tree to try to revive it and were unsuccessful. So that's the reason why it's being replaced. Uh, yes, and, I was... Uh, we can, provide some more information yeah is it an ash tree is it what is it why is it diseased you know i i can't tell from the picture and unfortunately and i my... i was just curious okay does anybody it else i do have a question anyway which is what i you don't want them to cut an oak at this time of year mm -hmm. okay 
Lucas, I had a question about water service. Is it okay as is? Are you going to need any expansion? Yeah, all the utilities are okay as is. They'll be reused. Okay, okay great. Good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right, anybody have any other questions or comments? So it's, again, you know, that thank you for, um, you know, in those areas of the enhanced lawn to help reduce the, you know, help reduce the paving. Uh, and we'll have to, the rest of us will have to come out and look to see how it, you know, those areas, because I'd be interested to see how that, uh, how that works. And if we can get more, it'd be great to have more parking areas and driving areas like that along the lake. It'd be nice to see a cross section of how that works and what the, yeah. the, the design specs are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think they show it on their um, restoration and landscaping notes uh, under their view four. It looks just to be, Correct me if I'm wrong, Lucas, but just the, the geotextile fabric wrapped stone with the topsoil over it. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. Detail four on C4.0. Did you get, is there any structure in there? I know we've discussed in the past, like, um, like the, it's like the plastic paver kind of uh, grid system that overlays uh, the stone. Yeah, in, in some cases you may it, it's sort of like a honeycomb grid that you would put yep. to fill the topsoil in so it, it's still not visible but it helps to add some structure to the topsoil so th that i uh i would recommend if you're having a lot of vehicle traffic over right yeah vegetated parking vegetated parking mm -hmm. huh. interesting yeah Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your comments and thank you for being here. Uh, any other comments before we vote? All right. Can I get a motion to uh, approve? So we'll go through the recommendations of. So really, the only main the, the main takeaway is to, and you've already talked about doing it, but we'll include it in the recommendations. But to, you know, continue to look. Through that front area um, and you know work with native trees and native species uh, to soften that area for the tree that you're going to uh, to replace so that looks like that is the main uh, recommendation since many of the others are even more than you know than we had put on there all right so can i get a motion to uh, accept the review for uh for 20-082 and then recommendations as outlined. So moved. I have a second. I have a second. <laughs> James looking at you. Yeah. Our, our second. Got, got oh, Justin, Justin, Justin seconded, seconded it. Yeah, right. Oh, I'll do the next one. Okay. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, the recommendations outlined for 20-082 carry. All right, so thank you for coming in, Lucas. So you can thank jump you, out. Everyone. We're moving on to the other ones, and we appreciate your work on the project. Absolutely. Take care. Have a good night. All right. So, Gary, do you want to do yours? So Pat knows that I think was, yeah, you're next anyway. So Pat knows that you're here and you're not falling asleep on the screen. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but I, I emailed out a uh, little information uh, a fact sheet on uh, storm stormwater friendly driveway for people to look at, and uh, it's out of Burlington, Vermont. But you know, I think applicable to uh, one of our discussions on on driveways and maybe. Yeah, I meant to print that off and bring it in, but I think I sent it. I think I went to print it, but I never went and got it. Uh, yeah. Well. In, let me know if there's something uh, I would be happy to work on to uh, adopt for adopt adapt for the, the, the town. Uh, I, I know others have uh, investigated this issue previously, but it seems to be a topic that comes up frequently. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it was well, a, it's a great concise handout, and uh, I liked seeing the drawings on there and everything that kind of spec it out. Yeah, it's hard to come by seeing both of those in one thing. Actually encountered it when I was down in, in North Carolina, where uh, the township there had stolen it from Burlington. So others are using it. So I, I think it's uh, of quality. Uh, all right. If it works in Burlington, it can work hey, here. It'll you work know? here. 
Amen. Amen. Lake Champlain. So the uh, the Hollander uh, project, uh, Sarah Linda referenced it in terms of creating perhaps some more drainage for the Smith uh, family to have to contend with in the uh, in the future. But why don't we um, maybe pull up the encore image initially to orient folks? So, so there it is, uh, kind of close to the uh, Notre Dame retreat uh, to the to the west of it. And uh, you know, if you recall, this we we looked at this area previously for a driveway approval, which was approved, and this is the first first project they're going to be doing, uh, first building. I did some pictures. If you want to pull up photo one, I should have. Done this is a single file, but I did not. The, the keyboard has gotten really no, not like not working for you. Yeah, it's only working part of the time. <laughs> There, there might be new batteries. Uh, that when that, that happens. Which pictures would you like, Gary? They're, they're big, uh, big files. Uh, so this is this is looking north on uh, Westlake Road. And you know, the property being developed is, is to the left, kind of uh, from this near mailbox to the, the far one mm -hmm. on the side. There's a culvert running along the, or, uh, you know, the drainage ditch, and then two culverts actually crossing County Road 16. Uh, to the other side, where drainage takes place, uh, up towards uh, Titchener Gully, I think is where the, all this water ultimately ends up. Um, let's go to uh, photo four next. Just to confuse things. Okay, and here is a swath of the driveway heading down to West Lake Road. Uh, so it's a big, you know, big area they cleared. I, you know, I think the proposal was for a 14-foot wide driveway. Uh, clearly, uh, there is an awful lot more uh, land that was cleared off. Uh, they haven't you know, started working on the uh, actual driveway yet. I think this clearing took place a while back. Uh, go to photo two. Yeah, so this is uh, standing on the site where the house is going to go looking south. And you can see a lot of wet area there. There's actually water running through from up above, heading down towards the, the road. So pretty, pretty soupy into that stretch. The place where the house is going to go is a little, little higher uh, elevation. Uh, go to the uh, remaining photo, number three. All right, and this is just looking down towards the, the road. And you can see a variety of different trees there. Um, and, you know, just a glimpse of Lakeview. Uh, the concern, one of the concerns, and I'll, as I read through my report, I'll make note of it, is uh, probably a desire to clear off a lot of this to uh, give the, you know, the residents a, a view of the lake. Um, there's a lot of a lot of vegetation holding back water uh, going downstream there. So um, I don't think we need to look at anything else right now. Uh, let me just read through my, my comments here. So this is an application for construction of a single family home with an attached garage on a 1.5 acre lot. Uh, the septic system and public water use is proposed. Uh, PRC recommended uh, the, the proposal to us for review. 
uh, is a referral for construction of a driveway to access four future house sites was previously approved. Uh, and this site plan would be for construction at the end of the driveway, which was modified uh, as required to allow for an emergency turnaround. Uh, construction will be in an area of moderate and very steep slopes uh, with uh, 8,500 square feet of grading disturbance in those areas noted on the site plan. If you want to pull up the, the site plan, I guess it would be good for folks to, to reference as I go through this. So the construction site plan includes a 12-inch conduit running west to, to east through the property and, and probably over that wet area that I showed on the earlier photograph. Uh, it exits near a two-foot culvert under uh, West Lake Road, uh, and, and the water on the other side will be draining north towards uh, Kitchener. Uh, the area of the property drainage on the steeper slope below the building site is covered with shrubs and smaller trees, most of them less than six inches in diameter. Uh, there's locust, a uh, couple of cedar, uh, a couple of black walnut, cherry, as, as well as some diseased ash trees are, are noted. Uh, the soil is identified as silt loam. Edith can probably speak more to this, but yeah. it's a permeable but uh, highly erodible soil. So, you know, the environmental concerns are no designated wetlands or endangered species impacted by this project. Um, the site is in the town's identified steep slope protection area. Uh, there are drainage concerns with uh, the you know, free flowing water uh, crossing the southern side adjacent to the building site noted uh, during a recent visit. We've had a lot of rain recently, but when I was there, was it hadn't rained for 24 hours. So uh, one can anticipate there's always going to be a, a fair amount of drainage to contend with there. Uh, there's been much loss of vegetation during the driveway construction. Although a 14-foot residential driveway was proposed and approved, uh, you know it appears that at least three times that width has been cleared already. Uh, there will be 8,500 square feet of disturbance in the steep slope area. Our, our steep slopes policy calls for a net zero increase in runoff resulting from such a disturbance. And uh, mitigation measures which are outlined in the site plan appear to be limited to several erosion control rock dams, which I, I don't know anything about, but they're clearly there on the, uh, on the site plan. So the recommendations uh, I came up with uh, you know, given the degree of disturbance to the steep, steep slope area, uh, there should be a detailed plan of landscaping and mitigation measures to address the runoff from the property, uh, as well as contending with runoff from the higher elevations above the, above the building site. Uh, the silt, silt loam soil in this area is quite erodible and clearing of trees below the site of the steep slopes should be limited to removal of dead or diseased trees and, and not aimed at maximizing lake views for the future residents. You know, healthy trees greater than six inches in diameter uh, should probably not be removed, but I'd be interested in other folks' thoughts about that. Uh, you know, again, you, you build a house in that area to enjoy a lake view, but clearly that's going to require a fair amount of destruction of the current uh, vegetative habitat. Those trees are going to be important for keeping the slope intact. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Stone, stone check dams in general are used to slow runoff. They don't really reduce the amount of runoff. They slow it down and take some of the velocity <coughs> of it. So it is an erosion control <coughs> measure to reduce velocity. Uh, yeah. Well, culvers don't seem like very much <laughs> getting 100 year storms, you know, about twice a month now. <laughs> but uh, I know that's, that's what the engineering specs are for it. But I think we are seeing that this is less than adequate <coughs> these days. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be worried about that. So they don't have on the plan like specific trees or areas where they plant or remove no. any no. vegetation. No. I think there should be a clear plan. I mean, yeah, there should yeah. be a clear plan. Yeah, and identified trees that are going to be preserved. Yes, well, because that's a good thing because like we don't know what's out there. Right, and replacing six-inch diameter trees with. <laughs> That's a lot of years of oh, that's a lot of years in row. Yeah. And on steep slopes, it really is the root mm -hmm. structure that's right. keeping the slope intact, particularly with that kind of soil. Right. Maybe they could locate some of the larger. Yeah, I know right. that's a lot of work to go out and locate them, but the larger trees on the property. Some of the larger yeah. ones that are there. Mm -hmm. like, I don't think it's greater than a certain. Yeah, like it's more significant than others. Maybe if they are, if there are. Would you to say, you know, six inches and beyond? Uh, well, oh, you know, yeah. six inches it's a pretty is a fairly decent tree. size tree. Yeah, four? I'd say maybe four. Four. Because, uh, okay. you know, it takes a long time for a sapling to mm -hmm. grow to a four mm -hmm. inch because diameter. Only because it's steep slope. Yeah, mm -hmm. the steep slopes right. are really the, the. And that's all that's holding it. Once the, the underbrush will be cleared. Yeah, a lot of it, and that's the only thing that's going to be holding that back in again. Yeah, there's a lot of you know, immature trees, certainly you know, yeah. many three and four inch trees in there. Um, uh, again, you know, a fair amount of ash, which are, are afflicted and probably will be taken out, understandably. But but some other species, which uh, you know, the trees look relatively healthy. Uh, in general, if they want to enhance a lake view, if they will trim the branches up so mm -hmm. that they're looking oh, through underneath true. instead of you mm -hmm. know cutting them down. This is true. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That could be another option for those more mature trees. Yes. To, to at least clean them up a little bit. Yes. No, it's uh, do we have, is there any, because as Gary was saying, I mean, I have not looked up at the site, but I have been up there. clearing that, so clearing so much wider than was originally approved. I'm going to, I just noted that. Did you note that? Look. Because, go yeah, because mm -hmm. if that's the, if that's going to be the status quo, right. then we need to be on top of them a little bit more. Because mm -hmm. I know, I've done enough to know that if you're doing a 14 foot driveway, yeah, you're gonna need to clear more than 14 feet, but you're not gonna need to clear 14 feet on each side for your 14 foot driveway. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. it's a huge swath that was, was cleared off. Right. Mm -hmm. Hey Gary, when you were crossing over, like uh, I guess the drainage channels on either side, I mean, we just had those heavy rains. Was there like sediment buildup or anything in there? Or that looked I, I, Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't appreciate that, yeah. You're talking about the culverts going under West Lake? Yeah, basically where they cleared all that land. I mean, did you see signs of where it eroded away and was right there? Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. Well, you know, surprisingly, where the driveway uh, enters into uh, County Road 16, uh, it's, it's relatively dry on that side. So I, I expect it to be a lot swampier with uh, water coming off the hillside, but it wasn't, wasn't as bad as some other areas. Yeah. Any other suggestions or comments? Have we, has this board ever suggested an easement, a conservation easement be placed over areas? Not sensitive not areas? Like, no. Not yet, no. Not yet. Okay. It would be appropriate. It might be something to look yeah. at in this steep Well, I mean, I think, of, I think of this one. Can you go back to the, one of the road pictures? I can't remember if this was because a few years ago I was looking to build a house for someone to help build a house and I think it was in this area here mm -hmm. and keeping that conserved I mean that whole area down between the house and the road is the only thing that's going to prevent and really filtering that from getting a good head of steam and going down mm -hmm. I wouldn't be opposed to it I mean you guys would have to decide on it but I don't know 
going if we can going forward when we it's could... going to be subdivided initially right you would so for one house no that, but these were already established subdivided okay the, so these were all okay ago. thank you so these are all so yeah since it's already subdivided we can't go back in time and do can. that okay so. But going forward, that's another thing to be mindful mm -hmm. of. Yes. That's right. what I was, yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah, because these have been lots of record for a while. They have yeah. Because mm -hmm. we often overlook the smaller, and we're the much smaller more, ones get overlooked, you know, know, like a three or four house mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. development like this, mm -hmm. where that could be taken advantage of and just let go natural. Right. Because cumulatively, those four lots are significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Especially in that area, because that's a steep. It is. That is a steep area all down there. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be interesting to, to know what the cumulative impact is going to be on the drainage. If, if indeed yeah. talking one house, but you're going to have four houses there, uh, you know, how I would determine that is this you know, something you would have an environmental engineer, a hydrologist come out and, and look and, and be able to run an opinion or, you know. I, I, I think that would be warranted and that, I mean, we know that there's these three other lots are going to come in soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we do have the ability to pay to bring in professionals to give an opinion. So that might not be a bad recommendation to bring someone in who can see what's happening now and see down the road that they want to do this one, but then two, three and four. And what do they need to do now to protect the others? You know, in the future, what's the impact going to be? I think we really need to be thinking about climate change. Mm -hmm. These, I think, the rains that we've had recently. And yeah, because those yeah. are not going to. It's not going to go back. Right. Man. I mean, when I was looking at the one that I'm going to report on, I mean, to have water mm -hmm. coming up to the floorboards of your lower level cottage and you could just see where how far it had come up two feet in a matter of a week or two the, the lake has lake risen. really risen quite yeah. a bit and that's recently. a lot yeah so we need to increase the drain it increase the water filtration increase increase yes how we're going to deal with water you know it can't be minimum anymore we've got to mm -hmm. encourage more so we could I, sorry, I was just going to say, and if the other lots are developed like this one, where they're just going to have the check dams and stuff, like Ida said, it's going to slow it down, but you're going to have that much more volume being rifled. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, and the other ones, that's why. It if we, doesn't reduce it at all. That's right. why if somebody comes in to look at the long term, they could put a remediation swale or something in there that's going to help draw and then disperse the water slowly. Yeah. Right, and again, cumulatively, if this was past the threshold where you would look at it as one entire development, but it's like almost like it's a little micro environment mm -hmm. that warrants us looking at the bigger picture with this. Yes. Mm -hmm. And DeHolland or Scott is the engineer too. Okay. Um, that owns a, the lot. So, so this is he's building for himself. He is the build. He is. I don't know if this is his home, okay. but he owns it and he's designing. He's okay. the engineer. Mm -hmm. So I meaning my point is, I <clears throat> he's really involved, and I think he would. You know, we could at least have that discussion with him. I think that would be worth it mm -hmm. to yeah. push that to have that out there, and okay. you know, even bring somebody in for recommendations. Were you guys would comfortable we with that? Would be we be responsible for consulting with somebody, or would uh, the Holland? No, the applicant would. And we can have, I mean, we could have MRB do it as well. Um, and we, you know, charge back. Right, and charge it. back to the, yeah. But I think it'd be worth having someone who has more experience. I mean, MRB just went and looked at another property on Middle Cheshire Road. They did. They did, right. you know, and yes. that they gave a lot of suggestions about some of those gray areas and what to do to help prevent yep. things. So that wouldn't be a bad because they have the engineering background, they, they do. have the water, they have, they yeah. do, and they, and they have the familiarity of our, yeah, of us, too. and, mm -hmm. and things, like so, yeah, would you guys be comfortable with that, recommending that MRB, I would start with that, okay, yes, <laughs> you mean, it's a pretty unique site, with just everything going on yeah. there, no, it is, and it's not, 
it's not just a single family home. It's not 60 homes, but it's something significant that we need to be careful of because depending on what happens there, sensitive. that whole area could feel pressure down the road to mm -hmm. have people want to do the same thing. And we don't want that other site cleared off. And all right. Okay, good. Okay, so any other comments? Gary, do you have anything else to add on that? No, no I, I like the idea of, uh, of the consultation, though. Okay. All right. So thank you for that report. All right. So uh, can I get a motion to approve the summary and the recommendations for 21 084? I will move. I will move to approve it. <laughs> Second. All right. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> So All right, did you guys, Gary and Justin, did you guys eye that? I didn't hear you. Yep. Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 So, that, so that one carries. Perfect. All right. Also mine. Uh, this one is 3588 County Road 16. And we are looking at the lower, the lake. Uh, the lakefront side of the lot. So, why don't yeah? Why don't, why don't you just can you bring up some of the pictures? It should be like right on the left somewhere. <coughs> I know. So, 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 maybe back up. Yeah. Up. So a little more. Next one. Is it the next one? Next one. Right there. You're right. Okay, so this is an interesting, I was just down there uh, today taking these pictures. So what they are proposing is a, so current conditions, you have a 515 square foot uh, single level accessory structure that is shown. It is a pre-existing non-conformity that you, non-conformity that you can see from the side. I mean, it's got a, a two foot, 2.33 foot left property line. Uh, so it is not in, you know, it's already pre-existing. Uh, one question that I do have on this, and I tried, I, the owner allowed me in because she came out when I was done looking at it. Uh, Chris Jensen was to have looked at it because to see if this is a secondary dwelling or an uninhabitable structure, because uh, that would depend on what they are allowed to do, but I have not heard back from him. Uh, my opinion, which is not, doesn't count for anything, but uh, I would say it's not, it's an uninhabitable secondary structure. There's no bathroom. It's basically an open cottage. You go in the back, you've got a sink, like a, a, a farmhouse sink, mm -hmm. uh, and that's about it, and two large open rooms. So upon inspection of the inside, the floorboards are rotting from the water damage. So you can see that it's, um, you know, needs to be redone. Uh, uh, there is the 15 to 20% steep slope behind. But with the same footprint, the water will not encroach on that steep slope area. And uh, there are no catch basins or other drainage remediation existing currently on the property. So there's the back and you can see how close it is to the slope in the back. Uh, and again, the plan is on the existing footprint of this lot. And because there is I didn't poke down underneath to see what the substructure is, but um, they're, they have a minimal amount of soil disturbance as well as part of the project. Currently the structure sits and there's a side view. You can see all the water that pushed up in there uh, and you can see how far it pushed up with how they've tried to protect their little break wall by adding the cinder blocks to it. Uh, it's about, sits about 12 inches above the ground. Uh, and the owner hopes and the plan is to bring the ground level with uh, infill of gravel and dirt and plant grass to raise the height of the building a little bit to get it above uh, where it is. So it's going to raise up about a foot higher than it is right now, uh, but it's still well within limits. Um, it's still well within the limits. So as you look at it, there are no real, you know, the, the, another, the lot coverage is 37.46% which is higher than the 30%, uh, but again, it's pre-existing non-conformity. So environmental concerns, there's no sewer septic because it does have the kitchen that goes right into the, uh, right into the, right into the, uh, the sewer drains. Uh, soil disturbance will be at a minimum. 
Uh, again, the lake erosion, lake proximity erosion will be a concern, any erosion during the project. And the other concern is any sort of drainage. It's a small parcel and it's a small property, uh, but there's nothing, again, to take care of the drainage or the runoff. So recommendations. You can, uh, Do you want any? Yeah, let's go through the rest of the pictures and then I'll go through the recommendations. There's a side view and there's the homeowner giving me a tour, asking me if I wanted a paddle boat. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be fit. No, to give it to me. She's like, it only needs new gaskets and seals. I'm like, yeah, I'm not taking, I don't want to take on anything that needs to be fixed. So, and there's the front. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice little. It is. I mean, it's a nice little yeah. summer, go down to the lake and grandkids sleep out in the front or yeah. the, the kids sleep. Again, no bathroom. <laughs> Uh, so there's that view, but it is tight. Uh, there's yeah. the side. You can see how tight it is to the side. Again, a closer view of the side. I just sent all the pictures that I took. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. And then the overhead view. So you can see how it does sit down there uh, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So recommendations, you know, we at least to be to appreciate building up within the same footprint and not disturbing any more area than is already there with the home. Um, we also commend they're, they're not changing anything to the grass. It's all going to remain grass. Uh, the step, the stairs are going to stay, no pavers, no anything else. So it's just they're going to dirt, topsoil, and, uh, and plant. Uh, staging areas across County Road 16, traffic and any runoff will be a concern with that, but that's not, that's just part of the problem down there. Uh, the big one is looking with us going forward, the current structure doesn't have anything to control runoff. Uh, so I would suggest, and I didn't see it, the plan is not super detailed, um, but something to at least catch the roof water, Over catch the anything to come from behind and some sort of catch basin to control and filter the roof runoff because it's said uh, from there, it's right into the lake. Dry well. Yeah. 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 So we that seen an elevation. There's really no, they're asking for waiting. Yeah, that's what she said. She said he was supposed to come out and do a digital, just the elevation of what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, we might be seeing. I don't know if we'll be seeing this again as it goes through because it doesn't seem like this is finished. I don't think it is. this is the finished product, the finish, the finished process. But that is my main concern uh, with it, and the, the zoning concern isn't something that. Mm -hmm. falls to us, but that'll depend on Chris deciding mm -hmm. what type of structure it is. Mm -hmm. And then it'll have to stay whatever that structure is because you can't have, add a second um, dwelling, dwelling on, no. on this, on the parcel. So for right now, it's just, it's kind of pretty straightforward with that. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments on it? Yeah, I just had one, I guess. When you said that they're going to try to build up the site um, where the yes. structure is. Um, obviously, when they do that, if they're bringing in soils, it's going to slope off and the footprint will be a little bit bigger to achieve that. Um, and that part, when I was talking to, to her, she mentioned them wanting to fill up to the retaining wall in the front. I made the assumption that that would also raise the home because if you're filling up the retaining wall to the front and sloping the dirt, then you would slope the dirt back to the home, which wouldn't be a, the smartest thing to do. Um, so, you know, I mean, I've seen that done before. It's not really the best thing that you're going to want to do. So your question is if the increased disturbance, if they're going to disturb more or just so the whole area is going to be filled in, I guess now. I'm assuming my, can you go back to the, the picture where you see the kind of like the, right in there? So I would assume that the area within, you see the bricks that they added on top of their retain, their wall. Mm -hmm. So she was explaining that it was going to go to the top of that wall to completely raise the site. Mm -hmm. I don't see any information on when or how and what they're doing for fill only based on what was being told. So what would you recommend it? So what's your, what are you thinking with that? For the yeah, I guess like the, the footprint or the area, um, I guess I didn't see it identified on there where all that fill material material is gonna go. Um, yeah. Yeah. Identifying that and want clean fill in there if they're gonna be there and it's gonna be in contact with the lake water, obviously. 
right? Not just whatever hard fill material that gets put in there that'll leach right into the lake. And then I guess if they're filling in the whole area, I mean, will they have to, um, I can't really see in that picture, but would they have to increase the break wall that's there or do something? Yeah, that have to go on? Um, I think the plan was only to, to the plan that she said, the break wall was new. And I wouldn't have even had this in here had I not spoken to her, mm -hmm. but the break, they're going to go to the top of the break wall or get closer to the top of the break wall from what she was saying. Uh, and I don't see anything in the plans or from what I heard that would indicate that they're trying to raise the break wall other than the cinder blocks uh, that they put there to try to slow some of the water down. So just up to the break wall. No. Just up to the break wall. Because the cinder blocks are extra. The cinder blocks are extra, so it's not going above where <laughs> right. the blocks are. Those just are just set the there. They just right. set there. Yeah, those are just set there as to try to remediate. Yeah, so I guess just more detail on on the the backfilling or filling with. Okay. Might be a good place yeah, I mean. To get, uh, kind, kind of uh, infiltrated lawn that was suggested uh, for the other mm -hmm. property, maybe. And then I guess you know. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and then they'll have to be extra careful with all the soil they're bringing in uh, for any kind of runoff because right. if they get a rain event, it's going right in. It's that, yeah, it's going to be gone. It's going to have to have, they're going to have to have fence and so the so socks all the way around it to keep it there until it's established. It'd be great to have it sodded instead of seeded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so detail of site and fill use. Um, yeah, and just, uh, you know, the neighbor is only two feet away. I didn't see what was in between the properties, but it could make stuff run into their lawn as well there. Yeah, they're a little higher. Okay. I, I, I feel like they're a little higher. This is kind of the low point. Um, they even sit a little bit lower than the house next door. The house next door is- Oh, on, did you see who lives there? Linda. Yeah, Linda's on the left. Yeah. Gilbert's are on the other side. And they kind of sit down in between the two of them. The Gilbert's house is a Lake Frontage house. Mm -hmm. And then Linda's obviously is up. So she has the second parcel down at the lake. Mm -hmm. But they do sit lower than the other ones. All right. So I'm going to take Edith's suggestion too and recommend sod. I think it was Edith. Maybe it was yeah, Pat. No, no. I don't know. I think it's hard to tell behind the man. I know. <laughs> And then uh, fence and uh, so silt socks to um, to control to control anything used. So again, we would need more information. And I'm glad you pointed that out, Justin. That we're going to need more information as far as what they're bringing in and where it's coming from, and to be extra careful that it's not just going and grabbing whatever and dumping it in there, because there's no place else for it to go. Yeah, we don't want to see that uh, need clean fill sign in front of it. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not good. Clean fill wanted. Yeah. I know Chris Johnson has a concern too about fire code separation. Too. Yeah, because on the two foot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be tight. Yeah, but that's and that's, that's down the road, but and I that's code that, enforcement more than. Yeah, that that could be problematic for the applicant. Right. Yeah. You know. Does that supersede a pre-existing, the new like fire code oh, yeah. and safety? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Thanks for that suggestion, Justin. Any other comments to add or suggestions to add to that? Okay. So, can I get a motion to approve uh, the recommendations for twenty one zero eight seven? I think it's Gary's turn. Come on, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That one carries. See, I just have to sit back. I can't do any of that. So I'm an I'm a not a voter. I'm just a paper mover and paper pusher and all that other stuff. Okay. So that's it for this. So good time for those. Except my packet is out of order. All right, so the November I saw the no I saw your the article for the for the newsletter. So thanks for getting that out there. Uh, Justin, you have December. 
I think we spoke last time it would be on winter activities. So yep. we'll get that. outdoors. Um, what was the date that needed to be in? Sorry. Probably I, before Thanksgiving, I would assume. Yeah, usually Probably the last week, usually the last week. I can never remember. I just go by the email that I get. Yeah, that says articles yeah, that are, says there's two in two days. That's yeah. Can, yeah, and that's when it's like, oh, I've got two days to write my article. <laughs> well, it's usually the week before town board yeah. uh, agendas. So. so, yeah, so if you have it by Thanksgiving, yeah. you should be fine. Yeah. And then January, I guess I can't volunteer for January because I won't be, there'll be somebody else. Oh, yeah. Stepping that's in great. and and run on the show. You guys run the show, but just pushing papers facilitating. around, facilitating the show. Yeah. Um, so anybody dying to do one for January or do you want to put that on the table for right now and come back to that next month? I, I, I'd be happy to come up with something. Okay, thanks, okay. Gary. Do we think the gypsy moths are going to be problematic again? I don't know. In general, they're, they cycle so that you have you know, a couple of bad years and then they tend to flat off. It partly depends on how damp it is because the, the fungus that controls them um, prospers if it's damp. Okay. So I would guess maybe it will be somewhat damp. I, I, I um, think it, it's hard to tell. Probably it will be less. Oh. We're going to do a, a, a egg mass survey at Ananda over the winter, which will mm -hmm. give us some indication, at least how that sprayed area did. I, I okay. sent Kim uh, I, uh, a map that the DEC has of the defoliated areas, and they do all these flyovers throughout the state. And uh, they focused in on the, the town and, uh, and, and sent, uh, sent it to me. and. Uh, it's considerably improved from what they saw last year when they did the flyover. Mm -hmm. uh, they, did it, they did it in, there we go. They did it in June and uh, uh, they were still chomping away, uh, but you know, it is not as extensive an area. Onanda actually you know, doesn't show up on this. So it's just the areas uh, circled in, uh, in red that uh, had extensive defoliation this time around. So I think Edith, you're right. I think the wet weather really has has helped. Uh, mm -hmm. and probably the spraying helped as, as well. So what are you thinking of that? Well, my my thought was that maybe in early spring or February we would do if it is going to be prob possibly problematic a you know preemptive. Because I could have used that. How do I prepare my trees yeah. for mm -hmm. for the spring or for the summer? What you can do in advance. Mm -hmm. I know we've talked about it, but it might be helpful to do something like that. Mm -hmm. Can you jump on it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do you want to throw that down there, Jim? I'm sorry. Do you want to throw a February down there? Uh, so potential yeah. gypsy moths. I did. Oh, gypsy look at that. moth prep. Yeah, prepping for the gypsy moth. Except they're, they're going to have a new name, and I don't think they've come up with what they're going to be calling them. Uh, uh, no, gypsies. Why is why that's a derogatory term? Oh, for geez. Got it. Okay. All right. Tree eating destructive creatures. I, yeah. I, I yeah. have a lot of a lot of good names for that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, you can't. We're being recorded, Gary. <laughs> All right. <laughs> This is all being recorded. Yeah. By the way, while we're here, you we did put ECB. Yay, excellent. Oh, yay. Excellent. Nice. Excellent. We also oh, have the good. flyer that's, here. Too. Yeah, that's great. We, this is a great site. Mm -hmm. so, I hope people know about it. If anything, site. with the, just the pictures and the colors and everything, yeah, to draw really people in. No, it's great. Mm -hmm. It's great. All right, and I'm going to go as I head out of here. I'm going to update the fall exhibit. It's still fall. I've been a little preoccupied, yes. but I will be putting composting in there. I have the tote in the bin, so I will be updating that. And then yes. uh, I will plan to put something up uh, late this, or at least have it ready. Okay. 
I am a little unsure about what January is going to look like for me. Okay. I am still hanging fire with the need to go to Hawaii for a foot surgery, mm. and it can possibly take place in January. I don't know. Okay. Um, don't worry about us. Yeah, don't worry about us. <laughs> You said Hawaii for Hawaii. Hawaii. You said Hawaii for a surgery. My daughter is the surgical head nurse for a hospital in Hawaii, and we have a really good foot surgeon. Hmm. And go, oh, you know, other than right? being Sounds here, perfect. living alone, unable to drive. <laughs> you know, so you might as well recover. Wait, wait, Hawaii. so you. Yes. You know the choices. This is actually a oh, question. Gosh, what are you? You're actually jump. What? I don't understand. <laughs> well, it seems like a fairly easy choice. It does. It does. So, but it would solve a couple of problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I mean, getting around. Yeah, know. sounds like it. And winter. Yes. And cold. Yes. You yes. know. But I will try to have something ready to install. Okay. Ready. Probably about you know winter fun since Justin is doing okay. something you yeah, know this and you know we'll, yeah, we'll uh, yes. win the winter here. Okay. <laughs> well, you better go. That's all I can say. I mean, I think we might have to make a motion. Oh, just say yeah. it. I will, I will second that. Yeah, <laughs> Justin seconded the motion. So you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. You're going now. Well, you can zoom in here. Yeah. In yeah. Well, it has been postponed, of course, a couple of times because of their COVID yeah. mm -hmm. problems there. Fear is you might go and never come back. You might just decide to stay. Uh, <laughs> my son in law would probably have some things to say about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> hesitate. Okay. All right. So we won't push that. We, that's, we don't get involved in those. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we wish you that it hope that it works out. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, all right, so um, new business, the ECB ordinance update is still in the works. Uh, Chris Nadler is going to review it. Um, I did get some feedback on it that there was some review about the role of a town board member being on that, that it might not be possible. Oh. Okay. Uh, and so we're just, it's the way it's worded, and I think if our attorney looks at it and words it, especially with the board member not being a voting member, mm -hmm. and just a, just kind of a paper pusher for it, that that can be fine. So it's still it's still in the process. The wheels move slowly sometimes, but that is waiting for a review uh, by the town attorney to look at it and just see if there are any loose ends that need to be tightened up with that. So that will happen. And then Sarah Linda has tendered her resignation. I'm sure some of you know, maybe not all. No. Apparently Pat didn't know. didn't know. But yeah, so Sarah Linda effective uh, the end of, I think she's going through December. So she's gonna finish out the year. So if you know anybody who's dying to jump on and get involved and, um, and do this either on any part, either from the educational aspect as we're able to get out and doing more or the uh, the project and the planning aspect of things. He has a unique uh, set of expertise in, in doing those reviews. It's gonna to be tough to find someone. I know, yeah. I know. She, um, I always feel a little bit less than adequate when I share mine after she shares one of hers. <laughs> you know, she does a great job. Yeah. A great and a great job with those, and know so much about every parcel that's out there. Yeah, it's, yeah, she's going to be a hard one to fill. All right, and then we also went uh, asked about the CIC report. Uh, the history team did. We don't know where we stand. I mean, I haven't. I can't make the meetings, but I spoke with Leaf. There is support for the cottage, the Putterman cottage, but there also are questions about the Putterman cottage. Uh -huh. So right now it's kind of up in the air uh, as far as if it's going to happen or not. Uh -huh. So that is still in the works and that is still, um, you know, kind of on hold. The big thing is where, go? where is it going to go? Uh, where are we going to put it? That's the number one thing. Um, 
let's see, and I wouldn't even be opposed to if we can't find a place to put it, you know, to, I, I don't know, remember if we talked about it here, but a museum or some other place that's got more acreage, Genesee country, you know, something like that. I don't know that it fits totally in their time frame, but a little bit later. So that's the only report that I have from there. Anything from the tree board? Uh, yes. We toured the uplands of Onanda uh, partly for the, the uh, project. <laughs> um, one of the things that we noted is a tremendous amount of invasive species. Mm -hmm. Buckthorn and Moldfar rose all over the place. Uh, we will probably need to check for uh, hemlock lily adelgid and see how the spraying and the treatments have. That was what, two years ago? I think it's recommended for every three years or so. So we're going to be taking a look mm -hmm. to see how this is holding up. Uh, we have talked about um, what Dan Marion has offered is or had, is going to offer to do a training session with someone from the parks uh, staff about proper pruning. And I am uh, jogging him to open it to the public <laughs> yeah. because there are a lot of people with trees that they don't know how to prune mm -hmm. or when to prune and it that's important and i think it would be a good public yeah, education that that's that's good. Yeah. yeah so that's in the works mm -hmm. okay all before january <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> The last time I went to Hawaii, I helped them remove 30 banana trees from their backyard. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we, we, Whoa, oh, really? Oh, it was terrible. Okay. Left about 30 there. So that was oh. the, the trees. That... We get buckthorn, they get banana trees as an yes. invasive species. I don't quite see the. I don't see what's fair in that. Yeah. All right. So, anybody else have anything for the good of the. Any other public comment or anything to bring up, guys? I just wanted there, to there was some discussion about an alternate meeting day uh, date. Uh, is that still being contemplated or or not? That has not come up. Any thoughts? Okay. We did not talk about that before you guys joined on. Um, refresh my recollection on that. I'm drawing a blank oh, yeah. on that one. Yeah, so Sean, maybe you recall that it was. Oh yeah, I know I'm remembering. Oh, yeah. Yes. To line it up more with the uh, the PRC and planning right. board. Right. right. We haven't really discussed it. Okay. So let's put that on for. We can also. We are all. We. I say we. The development office and I, maybe we. I mentioned it here. We're changing our deadline to the first of the month. Um, so let me look at. Just look at the calendar too and see. Like the first Wednesday? Or not sure. Or yeah. the first maybe the, the first. day number one mm -hmm. of each month. Yeah. If it's yeah. A, depending yeah. on like if it's a right. It, so it may change. At, well, it would change Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We're looking at that. Would it be the first? We don't know yet. Okay. okay. We need to push it. We need it earlier than it yeah. is. All right. Yeah. And then that'll so impact that, that could yeah. impact some of this because if you go earlier. We could go have, could go a little earlier, we could, absolutely. and then that would give planning board time to actually read. Well, what is it, absolutely. Then it could be, and then they have time to actually not just give it a cursory once over, but to actually look at it. Right, and then we could have time to actually collect the things or that the extra information that we needed. Right. To have it for the planning board. Right. Okay. So, um, let's just keep that. Let's keep it on the agenda, but okay. it's open discussion. All right, thanks for bringing that up, Gary. Can you put that on? Make sure that goes on there, Kim. On the next agenda, let's do that for December Yeah. Um, let's put that under development office. Okay. That so that way, at least we remember. So that it relates to the development and the timing on that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Gary, for bringing that up. All right. Anything else? 
So it is 5.42. Can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? Yes, All right, can I get a second? I will second. Oh, Pat, you guys are fine doing well, we're that. Not over here, so all right. we're yeah, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You.